Hey, it's Amy. Today I'm going to show you three easy ways of hand stitching on paper. I love the look of hand embroidery on fabric, which is part of the reason I started my line of hand stitched t-shirts back in 2002. Years later, when I fell in love with scrapbooking, I realized that I could take my stitching skills and translate them onto paper. Even if you've never picked up a needle and thread, after watching this, you may feel inspired to try these simple techniques. Here are the supplies I'll be using. In addition to scissors and a pencil, I will be using this embroidery stencil kit, this paper piercer, which is also a brad setter from We Are Memory Keepers, a piercing mat, you can use a mouse pad, some craft thread and a hand sewing needle, and this sheet of pattern paper. You can definitely use cardstock as well. I'm going to take this embroidery stencil kit and use the heart design. And as you can see here, I have one already pierced on the paper. And now I'm going to place it over here, take the brad setter and poke the holes according to the guidelines. Now you can make any kind of design you want. Uh, you don't have to have the stencil kit. I created these. These are part of my Amy Tangerine collection with American Crafts because I wanted to make it easy for people to sew on paper. In general, you definitely want to poke all your holes before sewing on paper so that you have not only a guideline, but also an easier time going through the paper with your needle. Next, you'll want to take a needle. This is a hand sewing needle from Daiso, and you can just get a multi-pack of these. And I would judge the eye by the thickness of the thread. You don't want it too big but you also don't want it too small so that it's really difficult to thread. Normally, I would actually stick the thread in my mouth and kind of get it a little bit wet with saliva, but I was able to pretty easily slide this through and thread the needle. I'm going to cut it, and on the long end, I'm going to tie a knot, and this is how I do it. I wrap it around my finger and I pull. This gets it kind of really close to the edge, and I find it easy to do. So I'm gonna do that one more time. And then when I sew, I like to have one long tail with a knot in it and one short tail. So I'm taking the piece of paper and from the bottom, I'm coming up with a needle and pulling the thread through. And then I'll go down the second hole. I'm doing a back stitch here, which is what I'll be showing you. Oops, sometimes the thread gets caught and I would just gently loosen it up and then pull it back through. So with a back stitch, you'll wanna come up through the next hole and then go down back through the previous hole. So the next open hole is actually that one and I'm going through it and then going back towards the last one. So you'll wanna repeat this back stitch all the way around the heart. One more time, up through the next hole and back through the last. And as you get more comfortable with this, you'll find that maybe you get into a rhythm. You may even find the whole process of hand sewing very therapeutic like I do. And I think that as soon as you get used to it and kind of get a good feel for it, you can really get into a good rhythm. All right, so when I've gotten to the end here, what I wanna do is turn it over and I like to tie a knot. If you don't like tying knots or you don't feel comfortable doing this, you can definitely put this thread down with washi tape and then trim it. So I'm going to go ahead and make another knot, thread it through the loop, get that intersection as close as possible to the paper, hold it down with my thumb and pull. Now I'm just going to trim it with scissors. I'll do the same back stitching for this heart and then show you the results and show you the second method I have for hand stitching. Okay, so the next method is using your patterned paper. 
I'm just going to trace the design. So I'm poking holes along the outer edge of the love design with my paper piercer as guidelines to outline the word love. You can do this with flowers, you can do this with hearts, polka dots, all kinds of stuff. So if your paper design already has something that you like printed on it, then you can go ahead and use this method. It's really easy. Um, just split your holes about a quarter of an inch apart and you should be good for hand sewing. And you're going to repeat the same back stitch here going up through the first hole. Oh, something I wanted to point out, as a rule, I typically don't cut the thread longer than the length of my arm because you don't want to be pulling thread through too much. So that's just a good kind of guideline I've set for myself. Perhaps you can use it too. All right, next, you're going to keep repeating the process of the back stitch going up through the next hole and back through the last. So up through the next, back through the last. Keep repeating it until you trace the whole word. For something like this where you already have the holes punched and you know that you're going to be sewing for quite some time, I recommend getting comfortable on the sofa. You can have a little trash can near you maybe and a pair of scissors so that you can cut the thread and tie it off and then cut a new strand when you're ready for that. I don't think this whole strand is actually going to make it around the entire word, so I may have to re-thread my needle. Okay, so as you go around, you may notice that it might be easier to, oh, you may notice that you kind of get caught up and it gets knotted. I would recommend just taking a step back and then loosening it or untying it and then resume sewing. So you don't have to go in order of the letters. You can go all the way around and then do the middle part if you'd like. But as you can see here, I'm almost done with it. And what I've discovered is that my thread is barely going to make it. And I'm not sure if it will. Sometimes the needle is a pain in the butt to thread. But here it looks like I will have just barely made it. Yay, done. Now for the third method, writing with a pencil. I'm going to write out the word you. You could choose to draw a picture or any sort of complicated design, but I'm just going to simply do this word, slide my piercing mat underneath. Once again, take the paper piercer and poke the holes for the guides. Now around the straight lines, you can go a little bit further apart than you would the curves. So that's just a good kind of thing to remember and keep in mind when you're poking your holes. All right, as much as I love the eraser on a pencil, I don't at all, actually. I prefer using this Staedtler white eraser, and I can go ahead and erase most of my pencil lines. Now I will tie a knot at the end, rolling it around my finger and then pulling it tight, and then start from the bottom. You can start from anywhere. I kind of just choose one end or the other and go in a way that makes the most sense for you by connecting the dots so that you're making kind of the shortest distances around so you don't waste too much thread. The last stitch is through, so I'm going to turn it over, tie a couple of knots, and trim off the remaining thread with scissors. This would make a great base for a scrapbook page. I could even cut it and paste it onto a card and send it to somebody. Though nobody really has to see the back of these designs, I will show you this journaling card and how it looks jumbled up on the back, but it's easy to paste onto another piece of paper. You can even try these methods on photos as well. Have you tried hand stitching on paper before? If so, leave the link in the comments. I'd love to see. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I look forward to seeing you guys soon. If you have any comments, please leave them below. Thanks.